Nice to have you with us here on the Ideas Network of Wisconsin Public Radio. Hello, Larry Miller here. Glad you're along today as we begin by taking a look at wildlife art with David Wagner of Milwaukee. He's a national authority on wildlife art, museum director, curator, author of American Wildlife Art. It's a 424-page volume. It contains 310 beautiful color uh, illustrations. It's published by Marquand Books of Seattle, Washington. David is also the former director of Wausau's Lee Yawkey Woodson Art Museum, and he serves as curator and tour director for the prestigious Society of Animal Artists. It's a worldwide organization. It's headquartered uh, in New York City, and it will be premiering its annual exhibition at the Neville Public Museum this Labor Day. David Wagner, welcome. Thank you, Larry. It's great to be here. Uh, and this, uh, I tell you what, this um, uh, exhibit promises to be really something. Oh, it's wonderful. Each year the work gets more exciting and better and better. And uh, artists will be showing up in numbers in Green Bay uh, today and tomorrow and uh, meeting the public on Saturday for the first time to premiere the annual exhibition. And as long as we're on that time, what's the exhibit? Tell us what we could expect to see. Well, we'll be able to see animals uh, of the entire animal kingdom, wild animals from Africa, from North America, from the oceans, but also domesticated animals, horses, dogs. We even noticed that there's a, a painting of goats in the exhibition, which will oh. be interesting. So, and, and wonderfully painted in all sorts of media and all sorts of styles. So we can all get there on Saturday, starting on Saturday. For the, And how long will it be running? It runs through uh, November, well, into early November, actually. Well, that's something uh, that we'll probably talk a little bit more about as we go along, but I really want to get into your book a bit and talk about American wildlife art and invite our listeners to join in. If you'd like to ask a question as we visit with Dave Wagner, give us a call at 1-800-642-1234, 1-800-642-1234. If you're in the Madison area, reach us at 263-1890, 263-1890, and you can email us at talk at WPR dot O-R-G. David, talk about how you've organized your book. It was, you start sort of with early wildlife art and go through to the present, basically. It's organized in various sections historically. I begin with early col- colonial work uh, and then work up to a section in the middle of the 19th century, Romanticism through Impressionism, and then 20th century, uh, right up to uh, the best artists of our present time. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned, there are many, many, many beautiful uh, illustrations of the works of, of these authors. How did you put all this together? It's an amazing feat. Well, I spent years and years. I wrote my Ph.D. dissertation at the University of Minnesota and was enlisted by Cornell University Press uh, at, uh, after uh, one of their representatives attended a program that I organized at Chautauqua Institute for Roger Tory Peterson. And with that springboard, I spent probably 15 years uh, traveling, interviewing artists, gathering materials, working in libraries, doing uh, primary research, uh, and just assembling this volume. Uh, and finally, this past Valentine's Day, uh, <laughs> it, it was my Valentine's present. Uh, we premiered the the book and, and launched it in Charleston, South Carolina this past year. Yeah, I, I just thought about just the logistics of getting permissions for... Uh, showing the illustrations and so forth had to have been a little bit mind-boggling at times. Well, I'm blessed to have a good publisher. They handled <laughs> those kinds of logistics, and I could never have done it without them. What? How is wildlife art different from other kinds of art? That's a good question. I think it's different in a number of ways, uh, but principally uh, it requires artists not only to uh, be creative and express themselves, their creative ideas, through uh, competent uh, technical abilities uh, and competent and interesting styles. But they also need to know a little bit more than your, uh, I suppose, average run-of-the-mill artist, yeah. uh, because they need to have a, a scientific perspective, or at least an understanding of things like habitat, animal behavior, uh, and all of the uh, ambience that uh, would, would, would surround their particular subject matter. It was interesting, and you go back to I, I think it was John White was one of the early guys that he he was a flora and fauna uh, 
uh, I think recorded some of the early flora and, uh, and fauna. He did then. mostly uh, mostly wild animals. Uh, he came uh, to uh, North America uh, in as early as 1585 and uh, was sent by uh, on expeditions by Sir Walter Raleigh to sort of scope out the New World for possible colonization. And actually, his earliest work also depicted the peoples that inhabited North yeah. America, and his works were published in Germany and gave Europeans their first glimpse of the New World, the people and the animals that inhabited the New World. And uh, as I think about White, there, were, there are so many great... Um, Artists, uh, giants, really in the in the world that uh, of art, wildlife.